the journey from chi to charge edge is best explained to the coils. So chi has two spiral coils and both the coils are supposedly independently tuned to 100 kilohertz thinking that it affords the maximum power transfer but that's a mistake. Anyway you do get some flux and you put your phone flat and it's pressing against a hot battery and the battery reduces the charging rate to about 3.5 watts. That's why it takes two and a half hours typically to charge. And this is the resin standard which has failed by now. It had a big transmitter coil and a small receiver coil. Both were independently tuned to about 6.78 megahertz. Same problem, hot coil against a battery reduces charging rate, but the worst was this killer of flux all over something that you didn't see and it would zap you. And here were some experiments from Qi that I personally witnessed. They all tried putting several coils pointing in the same direction, not realizing it was a very poor way to generate the flux. Sometimes they tried increasing the thickness of the ferrite to get a greater distance, but they all had the coils pointing in the same direction and the receiver and transmitter both independently tuned to 100 kilohertz. Big mistakes, several mistakes, never worked. But this is a version of Qi which actually worked, it's the triple coil version of Qi. But only one coil works at a time on the transmitter. And if you move the receiver, the best coil basically starts working, but it looks smooth. In fact, it's not because if you move it, it reinitializes, it again has to start up and find the best coil, it's not smooth. And both the receiver and transmitter tuned to 100 kilohertz, another mistake, but it kind of works. And Halo coil come were on the right track because they realized if you put two coils pointing in the same direction, that's a big mistake. How about putting them in the opposite direction? That actually Halo coil come, and this is called the double D coil. It's well known in metal detectors actually, and it produces a horizontal flux, which is very convenient. But what they did was a mistake. They put it usually with a double D coil on top. And though it does complete the picture, the flux is relatively weak compared to what we have at charge edge and they also made the mistake of tuning both the receiver and transmitter to the same frequency. So how about this, instead of the double D coil as the receiver put a longitudinal coil, the flux compared to this situation which is the number of flux lines per cross-sectional area is much higher now and that is why charge edge provides so much of power and we also removed this big mistake of this receiver supposedly tuned to the transmitter and that gives you charge edge and no hot coil pressed against a battery reducing the charging rate and you can actually see the screen as you drive in a car or at home and it's tiny and it can be placed at the bottom and then we added the firmware which adapts to all these different variations and alignments and we alone understood that. I can't tell you more about the secret sauce obviously here, but that took a couple of years to develop and that's charge edge.